Coming up right now on SUTV News, find out which campus organization is making prom dreams come true. And see what new dining option SHIP is offering for its students. It's all right now. Hello and thanks for joining us here at SUTV News. I'm John Schaefer. And I'm Lauren McQuay. Make sure to stock up on sleep tonight and tomorrow. SUTV would like to remind you to set your clocks forward an hour before. You go to bed Saturday night. The University Bookstore has been seeing some foul play this semester. Blake Cooper has the story. University Bookstore attracts shoppers from all around the area, but lately, the bookstore has been attracting some unwanted attention. Shoplifting has increased um, over the past semester. Bookstore manager Sarah Krause has been taking notice of the store's mishaps and is now taking action. We found lots of instances on camera. We've um, found, you know, missing hangers without the merchandise, things like that. The store trains employees on proper procedures for handling thefts and the effective methods to help deter them. Yes, we, um, we're making sure that we're on the sales floor. We're, we have a customer service model. Um, that de deters shoplifting. When a uh, customer comes in, we greet them right away, we check in with them while they're at the store, help them with whatever they need, and we really engage that customer to try to deter any instances. You know, we make that contact. But when shoplifters are caught, they are held responsible for breaking the law. We do press charges against shoplifters, and we also report them to campus judiciaries um, to involve them uh, with the dean dean's office and whatever's necessary. Thefts valued over $150 are charged as felonies. On the third offense, thefts under $150 are charged as felonies as well. Either way, it's a criminal record and possibly dismissal from school. We're here to service the students as best we can. And um, in order to do that, we need to make sure that we um, are providing a level of service and um, a level of follow through and, and shoplifters will not be tolerated in the store. SUTV News. If you notice any suspicious activity in the bookstore, you are asked to notify an employee. The university's chapter of Tau Kappa wants their third annual project, Prom Dress, to be a success. This event will help local teenage girls attend their high school formals without breaking their budget. It is for them to be able to enjoy their prom night, but not have to put out a lot of money. And a lot of girls aren't able to even go to prom because it's out of a question to pay for the dresses, pay for like everything else that goes along with it, hair, shoes, nails. So we hope to lighten the financial burden for everyone and so that they get a chance to experience what we got to experience and go to their prom. Each dress and related accessory is priced between $5 and $30. Tau Kappa wishes to reach their financial goal while also giving girls in the community a chance to make memories that will last a lifetime. Project Prom Dress will be held on April 14th from 11 to 4.30 in the Heights Fieldhouse. A new chapter of the Food Recovery Network is coming to Shippensburg. A group of SHIP social work majors are on a mission to fight food waste. The Food Recovery Network is a larger organization that kind of helps students on different campuses throughout the United States, I believe, start their own chapter so that we can start to reduce waste from dining halls and take it into the community. The group will be doing their first recovery this Friday, which will be featured on SUTV next week. Those looking to get involved should keep an eye out for an interest meeting in the coming weeks. Sometimes students want a hearty meal, but just don't have the time to stop and eat. If that sounds like you, Reisner Dining Hall has empathized and made some changes. Bo Wilson has more. The rules used to be that you could never take food out of Reisner, until now. The cafe has started a plan this semester where you can buy a to-go box for $5. It really helps, especially commuters um, and like the faculty and staff on campus as well, because they can, you know, they say, hey, I have to get to class here in five minutes. I don't have time to eat. Oh, I can use my to-go box. So they can come in and fill their box up and just take it with them. It has not exactly caught on with students yet. We've sold 10. <laughs> 10 in the past, what, two weeks? Yeah. In the past two. But Reasoner is working on getting the word out. We've put advertisements up around campus um, on some of the digital signage, on the napkin dispensers, 
Reasoner is shaking things up so that you no longer have to leave empty-handed. Bo Wilson, SU TV News. Now you only have to pay once and the box is yours, but you can only use cash, credit card, or flex to buy the to-go meals. March 15th, Kreiner the Fine Dining Hall will close its doors for the semester. Eldon Graham has the story. Innovation is the latest in a series of construction projects to improve the campus. Kreiner Hall is part of the uh, one part of a bigger project to um, modernize the heating and the cooling systems on the, on the campus. Students and faculty should not expect to see a totally different Kreiner when it reopens in the fall. All the construction that you're going to see is down in that mechanical area. The, uh, a, a renovation to Kreiner itself, the dining areas and the upstairs portion, because of this project that got put off, that got put back a year. So the inconvenience now will be worth it in the end even if it's painful right now. When we get done, Kreiner will be, will get its cooling from this plant, uh, which is, you know, on the other side of campus. That sucks. I love Kreiner. Um, I'm not real happy about it. I'm sad that Kreiner's closing because, first of all, my sister works there, and um, she really likes it. The relationships with the customers are more personal because um, there's less uh, bustle in and out of Kreiner. Students should hurry to get their Kreiner fix before it's too late. I'm Elden Graham, SUTV News. Papa John's and Subgeneration will stay open for the remainder of the semester. Soon, waiting in line for food on campus could be a thing in the past. Dining services are beginning to put in place kiosks where students can pre-order food from select dining locations. The kiosks you can order pizza or wings from Papa John's. You can order pizza from Tomato in the galley uh, food court in the Cub. Um, you can also view nutrition information and menus for each of the dining locations on campus. The kiosks are set to be put in place and working by the end of next week. Lance Kopp is here in the studio for a special SUTV report. Lance? We are sad to report that the Shippensburg community lost a beloved member this week. Father Dave Hillier, the priest at Our Lady of the Visitation Parish, passed away Wednesday evening due to a heart attack. If you would like to pay respects to Father Dave and the parish, there will be a memorial mass tomorrow evening at 6 at the church. Funeral preparations are still pending. If you would like to speak to someone about the passing of Father Dave, you can talk to Roxanne Dennis at the Spiritual Center. So from all of us here at SUTV, we send our condolences. Coming up on SUTV News, Sam New joins us to give us a preview of this week's slate. And Holly Hare will tell us if snow is still in our forecast. Feel like helping others in need? The slate is still gathering items for the Chambersburg Cold Weather Drop-In Shelter. Our drop-off boxes are located at the Slate office on the third floor of the Cub and the first floor of Roland Hall. The boxes will be in place until tomorrow, March 7th, so please get out there and help us donate to a great cause. This week's upcoming issue of the Slate will feature some new developments in SHIP's Student Senate and a newly added financial column for all of you business lovers out there. If you're not interested in business, be sure to check out the new weekly column on gaming and tech in our arts and entertainment section. Plus, find out why Canadian filmmaker Peter Finley visited SU and what he had to say to university students. Want to keep up with the news at SHIP? Check out our Facebook page, Twitter, or the SlateOnline.com for all things that's happening on campus. And as always, make sure to pick up your copy of the Slate on stands next Tuesday. Now let's send it over to Holly, who can tell us if the snow is over for good. Holly? Thanks, Sam. Well, thankfully Storm Triton missed our region last week. So let's see what Mother Nature has coming our way. Tonight, you can expect mostly cloudy skies and a low of 19 degrees. Tomorrow will be mostly cloudy and a high of 40, dropping to 25 at night. Looking ahead at this week, a slight chance of showers are expected for Saturday. 
but you should see mostly sunny skies and a high of 50. Saturday night, however, temps will dip to 32, and we may see some snow flurries, so snow isn't out of our forecast yet. Sunday will be partly sunny and a high of 45. Monday and Tuesday will be sunny days, a high of 51 for Monday and 54 for Tuesday. So, all together, a fairly nice week ahead, so enjoy the sunshine. Let's hand things over to Chandler Harris with the latest in entertainment. Chandler? And the new music, movies, and video games for this month. First up, Glee stars Leah Michelle's new album, Louder, came out this week. Idolator.com says it may be the very first offering from a TV Broadway star brave enough to step away from her roles and unveil her truest self. Louder is available on iTunes now. YMCNB is coming out with a new album March 11th titled The Rise of an Empire. HipHopDX.com states this release will showcase the platinum selling artists you know and love such as Wheezy F Baby, Nicki Minaj, Drizzy Drake, Tiger, and as well as celebrate some of the up and coming artists who you will surely become to know and love. The 12 track LP and previews are available on iTunes now. On to movies for this month. We've got Bad Words coming out March 14th, starring Jason Bateman from Horrible Bosses. Movie Insider states it's about the bitter child of the organizer of the National Spelling Bee and how he gets his revenge by finding a loophole and attempting to win the spelling bee as an adult. Along the way, he befriends a reporter and a young contestant who he exposes to the wilder side of life. Next, the Muppets are back. Kermit the Frog and all of them are back in the Muppets Most Wanted. This time, the gang is on tour and they get mixed up with European jewel robbers headed by a Kermit the Frog lookalike and a sidekick played by Ricky Gervais. Other actors you can look forward to seeing are Tina Fey and Ty Burrell, who you guys may know from Modern Family. He plays Phil. It hits theaters March 21st. It's not Halloween yet, but a spoof off of, those, off of all those scary movies is coming to the big screen near you. A Haunted House 2, com a Haunted House 2, a Haunted House 2 comes out March 28th star starring Marlon Wayans, Bo's favorite actor, and as Malcolm, and Essence Atkins as Keisha. This sequel is inspired by the latest supernatural horror movie franchises and shows this time it's not just the house that's always haunted. As for video games this month, the popular show South Park is back with a new game. The long-awaited release has gamers everywhere eager to play. Blake Cooper has more. Comedy Central's hit show South Park has released their sixth game this past Tuesday titled South Park The Stick of Truth through its developer Obsidian Entertainment. The RPG-style game places players in the role of the new kid in which you fully customize your character and set them on a path that can be described as one heck of a journey. You fail in guarding the Stick of Truth, a sacred object that will hold all power over the residents of South Park and it's up to you to get it back. Through quest and exploration, you find many of the show's quirks and characters throughout the sandbox-style rendition of the Quiet Mountain Town. The art style, voiceovers, and themes make this game seem more like a lost episode marathon as it parallels to the show's quality. With hours of gameplay and positive reviews, this just might be the game to get this month, as it's released on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. You can get the game wherever retail games are sold. If you have a taste for blunt, blunt humor, you may want to see Cat Radley perform at the Cub this Friday. Nick Hollop has more. I, <laughs> I just recently became, like, religious again. Like, I just recently decided to start following Jesus on Twitter. <laughs> Kat Radley is a no-holds-barred comedian from Los Angeles, and she's coming right here to Shippensburg University to perform a show. It's this Friday, March 7th. Yes, this Friday, March 7th at 10 p.m. in the Red Zone in the Cub. If you're free Friday night, come on down to the Cub for a good laugh. In celebration of Women's History Month, the Women's Center, along with the Women's and Gender Studies, are hosting Anita Sarkeesian, creator of Feminist Frequency, Deconstructing Strong Female Characters. Her work focuses on empowering women's issues. Well, we're really excited to bring Anita to campus, and we are anticipating that she will really do a lot of um, dialogue about women in the media and mostly their inequality, the unequal treatment that they receive in advertising and video games. Those are kind of her two specialties. It all starts Wednesday, March 12th at 7 in the Cub NPR. To find out more about Anita, you can visit feministfrequency.com. If you're looking for a good, clean race, then look no further 
Cub APB will be hosting its very first annual bathtub race. Bathtub Racers is pretty much the go-kart version, only you're sitting in a bathtub. Um, nothing too special about it, and bubbles are optional if you choose to use them. <laughs> Bring your rubber duckies and come out next Thursday, March 13th. The event will be held in the Cub NPR from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's all for entertainment this week, everybody. I'm Chandler D. Harris, and back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Chandler. And now we send it over to sports. Women's basketball took on Kutztown last Saturday in the first round of the PSAC tournament. Hayden Kephart has highlights. The seeded Red Raiders took on the number six seeded Kutztown last Saturday in the first round of the PSAC tournament. Logan Snyder finds Morgan Griffith here with the layup. Here's Caitlin Dieter. She gets the rebound and she finds Lauren Gold for the easy layup. Shippensburg played a good first half as Sarah Strybuck drains the no-no here. Kutztown played scrappy in this one as they moved the ball around and capitalized on Raider defensive errors. Kutztown played the upset role in this one, defeating the Raiders 83-74. For SUTV Sports, I'm Hayden Kephart. The women finished the season with a 17-10 record. Ship loses only two seniors for next year. Students are constantly graded in the classroom, and a new segment will be grading certain aspects of SU sports. Look for it at the beginning of every month as we review topics from the previous one. Kyle Toomey and Chris Eckstein give us the SU TV sports report card. Thanks, Trey. Well, what would sports be without a little critique here and there? We call on our own Chris Eckstein, who hands out the grades for this month's report card. Okay, Chris, first we have senior swimmer Julie Brown who the team is done as a whole, but she is competing in the NCAA Division II Championships. What do you have to say on this young lady? Julie Brown has been impressive uh, really all four years that she's been here. She's got five All-America honorable mentions in relay events. She's got one to her name, uh, an actual All-American honor to her name for her work in the 50-yard freestyle. Uh, last year that, in that event, she finished eighth in the nation. We'll see what she can do. She swam a 23-5 uh, in the 50-yard, in the but uh, we'll see what she can do. And definitely, definitely have to give her an A+, plus, so we'll start that off with an A+. Plus. Awesome. Great way to start. Now, up next, we have the wrestling team, who is ranked number six in the Super 1 region rankings. Now, they've had a rough and tough February, so what do you have to say for the team? Well, I think they just have to produce when you're ranked that high. But they didn't win once in February. You know, you just uh, you have to be a little bit better. They have some young talent. And, uh, you know, we'll see what they can do in the future, but I have to give them about a C-. minus. Okay, now moving on to the next topic, very, very important topic, Jay Hardy's hair. What do you have to say about this man's hair? Well, I love Jay Hardy, his, his play, and I love his hair. I think an afro, a Dr. J-style <laughs> afro, would, be, uh, would probably be a really a big hit, but uh, I give Jay Hardy a solid B for his hair. So what would you say, in your opinion, is better, Jay Hardy's hair or the alley-oop dunk he had last week? The hair takes a little more upkeep. You got to keep after that hair. At, uh, the dunk, it was, it was nice as well. So I, I, we'll, we'll give him an A for both, I guess. Great. Okay, now the next topic is Megan Lundy, uh, who had a strong, strong month of February. So what do you have to say on this lady? She won the 400 at the YSU invite a uh, few weeks later. She breaks the school record in that same event. She's, uh, she's young, she's talented, and I, I, have give her, I have to give her an A+. Plus. Awesome. Now, staying, staying on track and field, the um, person who we had talked about last week on SUTV Sports is Grant Smith, who had just recently broke the shot put record for PSAC. Um, so what do you have to say on his, his feature, his amazing accomplishment? Well, he threw a 59.5. Uh, he broke the indoor PSAC record, as you said, and uh, that was set back in 1997. So that just goes to show how long that record's been around. That's, that's very impressive. I have to give him an A-plus as well. Definitely, definitely. Now, uh, next topic is the crowd at Haggis Fieldhouse, or the lack thereof in many cases. What do you have to say about the audience at Haggis Fieldhouse? You know, I think college sports are, are all about atmosphere, and in particular basketball. So I'm really disappointed in the crowds this past month. There's a lot of talented athletes on the men's team and the women's team. 
I have to give him an F plus. F plus. Hmm. No good. Okay, now our final topic, our own Trey Campbell had wrapped up his commentating career. So, let's listen in some of his work from February. Welcome to Highest Fieldhouse on the campus of Shippensburg University. The first 400 fans, Chris, get sunglasses. And I know I've got mine. And uh, I think I might keep these on. Lauren Gold going underneath. Gold with a jumper and Gold has been on fire all night so far. All right, Chris. Now, what would you grade our good pal Trey? I want to give Trey an A+, plus, but I have to retract it to an A-, minus because he his overuse of the word errant. Errant pass, errant shot. So, uh, but, uh, you know, he needs to work on his catchphrases as well. But, Trey, I got you on the catchphrases, my man. So, good work for Trey. So, solid A-. minus. As well, had the great opportunity to learn from Trey in commentating football. And it was an amazing experience, and we wish him all the best. Now, uh, that wraps it up for this, for this month's sports report card. Now, back to you, Trey. Well, at least I made Dean's list, right? But I, I think that was an errant grade. I'm not lying. I think that was an errant grade. But thanks, guys. Chris Eckstein continues reviewing in this next piece. He has the scoop on first-year basketball coach Chris Fight. Lococo. No good, and that comes to an end at Highgus. They haven't won a game in the PSAC East. That is the final buzzer. A disappointing loss for Shippensburg. The Mansfield Mountaineers come into Highgus Fieldhouse in Shippensburg, and they take this basketball game. There it is, the quick impound, not much time. Two, one, no, it doesn't fall for Reggie Charles. The and Red Raiders drop another tight game. It's just not been a good season. Raider basketball has not had a winning season since 2007. This led to the firing of coach Dave Springer, leaving the door wide open for the hiring of Chris Fight. There's so many changes and things that go on each, each off season that you know, no one knows me and, and my style as a head coach is my first head coaching job. This is Chris Fight's first head coaching job, but before this season he was a primary assistant at IUP from 2006 to 2013. Also a decorated player, Fight was named an All-American twice when he played at the University of Rochester. He was named the most outstanding player of the 1990 NCAA Division III Final Four when Rochester won the national championship. He is the Yellow Jackets' all-time leading scorer and shot blocker, and was inducted into their Hall of Fame in 2005. Following college, he spent 13 seasons playing professionally in Europe in the British Basketball League, Germany's Bundesliga Premier League, and the Belgian National League. Even with an impressive resume, Coach Fight knew the team had to come together for the program to move in the right direction. The Raiders, led by sophomore sharpshooter Joe Lococo, are a young team. The team's only senior, Dylan Egger, had to redshirt this season due to a knee injury, but he plans to return next year. Hired on June 29th, Coach Fight hasn't been head coach of the Raiders for even a full year yet. He hasn't made winning his top priority. Yet. For Coach Fight, the day-by-day -day improvement of the team has become his main focus. As a coach, all you can ask for is that they come and work hard day in and day out and that you, you steadily improve as the season goes on, and I really feel as though we've done that. Sophomore guard A.J. Mon thinks Chris Fight has instilled plenty of fight in the team. What he expects from us is just, you know, it's, not, it's not, nothing complicated. It's just got there, you know. We have a system, but you know, as long as we're working hard, you know, diving for loose balls and... You know, giving it, giving it everything we got, that's what, that's what he wants. While on the sidelines this season, the Raiders' new leader says the program has been learning a lot. We have to take a lot away from each of these games, each experience, and myself as a coach and our staff has to learn, and, and the players have to, have, to, have to take things from each, each situation that we go to as well. So I think that we'll be much better for this in the long run. With fight, the Raiders seem poised for an exciting future. Chris Eckstein, SUTV Sports. Under fight, the Raiders went 3-23 and 23 on the season. There's a new supplement that is catching the attention of college athletes. Kyle Toomey tells us more. You know, being a student athlete can really have some wear and tear on your body with the lack of nutrients. You know, going to all the games and practices can really leave you exhausted and tired. And that can have some effect on your grades. But there's a new supplement, and it's called Zuri. I'm just going to stick to being a reporter. 
this, because of the high quality that it is, it's all natural and GMO free and it meets all clean eating standards, but you're taking something your body can use and absorb and it's going to help you achieve your health goals. So wait, products in GNC are illegal in the NCAA. Is this legal? Well, what makes this product different than anything else on the marketplace is that it is 100% all natural. It's GMO free, like I said, and which means you're just using food-based products to give your body the nutrition that it needs. So you're saying going to the gym isn't enough? It's going to help your body from the inside out. Then what's going to happen is that all those things that you're working on in the, in the weight room, in the gym, or on the field, all of those things are going to help you um, uh, moving forward just because of that better nutrition. Zuri, could have you shooting half-court shots like Bo Shandigay. For more information on Zuri, visit LizFetro.com. And that's all for sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Trey. Thanks, Trey. That's it for SUTV News. I'm Laura McQuay. And I'm John Schaefer. Don't forget to follow us here at SUTV on Twitter, Vine, and Facebook to keep up with everything happening here at the studio. Thanks and good night.